Hey, everybody. Another edition of Bird Brain 66 with my good buddy Brian on the left or the right, me in cyberspace. What's up, Brian? Hey, Andy. Hello. How are you? Doing good. Uh, we're out here again to uh, look at another uh, anniversary set. Uh, we're going back to 2004 this time with the uh, Topps Bazooka set. As we all know, and if you've ever collected any cards, Bazooka and Topps have had a long standing history together, whether it's with bubble gum or cards or vice versa. And so they had some pretty cool little colorful, colorful sets back there in the in the 90s and the 2000s. So we're going to look at the 2004 set today. What's your initial impression of this particular set? And and I think I think I know what you're going to say on this one. Go ahead. <laughs> well, I, I know I like it. I'm just going to go back in time for a, a second because uh, those the cards that uh, that were on the bubblegum boxes in the in the 50s and the 60s are super difficult to uh, obtain. There's a couple of common guys that you can find, but uh, the run of Ken Boyer is excruciatingly painful uh, to collect. There's other guys like Brolio in there and a couple of other other ones. If you remember, Andy, there's also the one where they're on the box where they're the real thin strip from like 68. So that's got uh, Flood and Gibson and Brock. Super difficult. So when Topps brought back this different variation of um, Bazooka, um, I liked it. Again, just, I, you know, that was the gum that came in, in the cards. Um, I actually like it. I like the design. I like the, the color of this particular set. Um, I think Andy, what he was going to, uh, where he thought I was going is this is the one where I started collecting the full size set and didn't realize at the time when I was buying them that I was actually buying the minis and Andy can you, had can to, you, can you, can you throw that card back up there? Yeah. 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 You so, had to slowly. Oh, I see what you're saying. There's two different. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a cool set because number one, you get two different Albert Pujols cards in here and they're in uh, great action shots is what I, that's what I thought you would say about the set. A lot of great action shots. Oh yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Even though it's a smaller set, very, very nice uh, action shots that they did in the set. Unfortunately, it's not very many cards in the set. That's the downside of it. Of course, this is the year, you know, one of the years with the MV3. So they're all in there, which is really cool. Is Mr. Roland, the Hall of Famer. Just showed a future Hall of Famer. Now we got the Hall of Famer here. Right. The only the one guy I wish they would have got in here was, well, actually, there's a several guys I wish they would have got in here. There he is, Yachty. And I'll throw up, you get that one, and I'll throw up that one. So, and here you go. Now you get two Yachty rookie cards. So, obviously, 2004 is Yachty's rookie year. So, there you have it. Mr. Molina in uh, two different uh, action shots there. Obviously, uh, spring training for both of those particular pictures, if you look at them. Because, uh, but uh, the one... I'm going to point this one out just because he's in a bunch of top stuff and our two, in 2004 or and everywhere. Mr. Blake Hawksworth, the only non-action shot in the set, that's which is uh, I thought was kind of interesting. But there you go. Yeah, and uh, Prospect, Blake here just and that's a lesson for everybody. Prospects, you know, not can't miss guys, and everybody gets upset if we trade somebody or get some get rid of somebody and then it's like then a lot of people probably saying like who's Blake Hawk Hawksworth you know so there you go exactly that's the that's the point who is he he was another one of these people that we you know sold the bill of goods on and um anyway he, whatever whatever reasons got hurt we moved on from him or he just he uh, didn't live up to the expectations fan favorite that's exactly the one Yep. Bo, Bo Hart, which I've, like with him and like Stubby Clap, Joe McEwing, Joe McEwing, big followings in the collecting world. So a lot of these cards are actually hard to find. So just to let people know, if you are going out there and you can't find one of these cards, sometimes, it, you know, those particular three guys, it's very hard to find uh, cards. On these well, guys. you know what? It, it's funny you should mention that because we got a couple of uh follow us uh on our social media channels and there are two individuals who uh and they're different collectors both have uh stubby collab collections and there's a guy there who has a bow heart collection sorry i can't remember his name or his handle off the top of his head off the top of my head but he actually has on his 
um, handle how many bows have been produced and how many he has in his collection. It's 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 pretty cool. It's like a hundred and I think the last time was like a hundred and eighty one or a hundred and eighty two. And the guy has like 120 or 130 of them. So That's yeah, impressive. that's the other neat thing is that there are, yeah, it is, but then that's why it's hard to find guys like that. And there's Jimmy ball game. Jimmy so ball game. 2004, he had the catch and the walk off and the playoffs. One of the, one of my favorite uh, Cardinal teams was 2004, even though we didn't win the world series, I actually got swept in the world series, but uh, other than the world series uh, winning teams, one of my favorite, uh, years of the Cardinal baseball and uh, postseason run that they had up until the, obviously the world series, you know, we had uh pools leading the team with 46 homers and uh, rolling with a hundred and uh, I think it was 124 RBIs. And actually we had four guys that were hitting over 300 on that, that particular year, which is impressive. We had pools, Womack, Roland and Edmonds uh, over 300, which obviously you'd, it, that would be rare to see today. And we actually have uh Four pitchers that had 15 wins or more in Marquis, uh, Morris, Soup, and uh, Carp. So, and that, and Carp is missing obviously out of this particular set. And so is Supon and, and Marquis is actually missing out of this set. So, <clears throat> another big guy missing out here is Jason Hissringhausen because he had 47 saves that yeah. year. So, a lot of yeah. uh, key guys obviously they limited this set to 300 cards. So, they picked what they felt right. they needed to have inside this set. But uh, Matt Morris does make an appearance in this particular set. Did you throw a Matt yeah. up already? Yeah, I just had him Oh, up. I'm just sorry. Yeah. That's okay. No worries. There. Yeah. I, I was busy running my mouth instead of paying attention. So no, that's okay. Here's I mean, one of the guys. Yeah. I love Matty Mo. Yeah. Great this one group. is one of my favorite. Here's oh, yeah. It's Reggie Sanders. Acquisitions that uh, – Walt Jockety used to make. Remember, remember that guy. Remember what it was like to have a, a GM that actually made moves that made sense. Oh, yeah. Picked up. I mean, this was a great addition to the team. So was Ron Gant. Uh, just then I love Reggie Sanders. I love do rag that he used to wear. I don't know if you have any of these, but there's a there's a bunch of inserts as as there always is in tops. So they had these stickers and they're quad stickers. There you see. Albert on this particular uh, quad sticker along with some other guys. So they had that and uh... I love this. Oh, there you go. Well, That's you like getting ready to pull that too. out. The uh, the Pujols comic. Yeah. Very cool. I mean, so nice little set. Uh, some very, uh, some great, I mean, great players in there. And uh, I wish, again, well, it's one of those things, you know, when you tops is over overloading us with sets these days, you know, and um, with their deal with fanatics. But now I wish they start make, start producing another bazooka set or something. That'd be kind of cool. Do something a little bit different than what we're doing right now. There you go. So the, this is what I yeah. The this menu. is what I was originally collecting, and this was Andy telling me and. Uh, like he does so many times going, hey, Chucklehead, have you uh, done your homework? I'm like, what are you talking about? You know, there's a full size what set, right? And I'm like, oh, no, I did not know that. So again, mini full size of Woody Williams. Great what? career for Woody. Uh, great trade. I mean, I know we had to give up Ray Langford at the time to acquire Woody Williams. But what talk a, about what a nice right. segue right there, Brian, because Ray Langford was actually back on the 2004 team for 92 games. So That's right. Nice job. But the incredible thing is, I think Ray only appears on one or two cards in, in 2004, which the, they're very hard to find. And I know one of them is the um, MLB Showdown set. He actually appears on a card there, and I think there's one other set that he appears in. So... That's the last. That's the last run of Ray Langford uh, with the Cardinals. Uh, I guess. Well, you can't say. Unfortunately, he was probably he was really at the end of his career at that particular time. So, but cool to have him back Very in two thousand and four. Yep, good call. Good call, Hall of Famer, Mister Boom Boom Ray Langford. Lot every time I refer to him on a uh, one of our social media uh, platforms, it's it's hilarious that without. Any hesitation, Andy Bennis jumps in and always refers to him as Boom Boom. I guess I, obviously these guys are great, yep. great friends, but uh, Andy's one of our big uh, 
big followers, as is Ray King, who was a big part of that uh, 2004 Yeah, another another season. great guy left off of, out of the set. So Yeah, he was we'll, the maybe big... We'll go back, we may go back and feature a bigger set down the road. To, yeah, to definitely. I mean, I remember that acquisition. I mean, talk about... He was tremendous coming out of the bullpen. In fact, a lot of people refer to him as Mr. Rubber Arm because he was the lefty that... And he went on... I, he came over with another familiar face to the Cardinals organization when he came to the Cardinals. Yep. Who was that, Brian? Go ahead. Uh, let me see here. He was another pitcher. He just wrapped up his career. Uh, it's going to be a Cardinal Hall of, Hall of Famer for sure. Is going to be a uh, analyst for Fox Sports coming up. Uh, big tall guy. Um, just dicking around here uh obviously Wayne, like, wayno yeah yeah so but yeah that i mean and, and and technically wayno was the big name in the trade and uh ray king ended up just having a you know that was it was his best season as as a relief pitcher yep. he had um i wish i could know, i remember this off the top of my head but ray um had this incredible run and i think he had like 30 plus career um um gosh dang it what's the stat holds where he you know came in with a lead and and didn't give up any runs and anyway just a great bring that up too is ray has become a, an incredible follower of uh bird brain 66 and has jumped in with some comments and likes what we do as well but ray had a fantastic 2004 season well andy i know that we're wrapped up on talking about the set itself so i, I know that you always have a blast with the with the pop culture so what do, what do we have here i know that i looked up some of the movies that were out in 2000 and friend my, my gosh, i didn't watch a lot of, i really didn't recognize any of the top ones the only one only big one out of there was shrek 2 and i think that was actually the number one movie in 2004 as far as the box office was concerned other than that it was really look. It looked like a pretty crappy year back in the day for uh, movies back in the box office. Um, Van Halen, the uh, last Van Halen tour with Sammy Hagar, actually occurred that year in two thousand four. I actually went to the show. I was supposed to go with my brother, but for some reason I didn't want to go with my brother. I had to go with a friend of his, so it was re really really strange to go with somebody I didn't even know. But I wound up going to see the uh, that show with. Uh, with that guy so then that, that was the first appearance of wolfgang van halen with van halen he came on stage and played with him for a short period of time when he played you know and that goes back to the uh old argument you know people are arguing about sammy dave dave sammy well, who was better and blah 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 but uh last tour was sammy and then uh that was pretty much the end of that until uh 2012 when they put out a different kind of truth with uh, David Lee Roth and yeah. Wolfgang. I'm trying to remember that. That's, a, that's great about your story because I ended up doing the same thing. I was supposed to go. Kathy did not want to go. And a, a neighbor, when I used to uh, live on the east end of Belleville, Road, when Andy and I uh, were, lived pretty close to one another, um, was actually my youngest sister reached out to me and said, Hey, uh, this guy by the name of Chris wants to go to the concert and he, he doesn't have anybody to go with. And I didn't have anybody to go with. So we ended up going together. We had a blast. We hung out at Shannon's restaurant afterwards and just had a, had a great, great time. But, uh, yeah, that was the last time that I saw him was in 04. So yep. very cool. What about, um, any other good music out? Uh, sure. Confessions, number one album, number one song was Yeah. You know, everybody knows that song. If it, you've ever listened to the radio, even if you it, unintentionally, you, you've heard that song. So that's, I mean, I don't know, for, to me, is an off year for music. I mean, I'm not dissing on Usher. Yeah, he's a fabulous right. performer and the artist, uh, just saying that, uh, in our genre of music, I was I don't not a whole lot of stuff that I was really interested in that particular year. I think yeah, about the only band that uh, yeah, had anything out there in in '04 that like reached the top twenty was uh, Creed. Um, right. You know they had some stuff, and I always liked them, and I heard that their 
now thinking about uh, putting together another album because they're out um, touring and they mentioned that they actually enjoy writing when they're touring. So that was exciting. I've always been a, um, one of their songs. I'm just going to throw this one of my favorite songs of all time by Creed. So hopefully that, but um, anything else? That's about it. I think it's time to wrap it up. This little sun again, I'm getting in my face when we do early, but Hey, everybody, we greatly appreciate uh, you joining, getting bigger and better all the time with our followers. Just had another big uptick on several of our, Social platforms, which is Facebook, uh, X, uh, Instagram, uh, threads, all of those. You can find us at BirdBrain66. And of course, the one that we hope that you also follow us on is this particular platform where we're doing these great videos, which is on YouTube. And even our subscribers on YouTube have been growing. So again, we just can't really thank you. It. Yep. So with that, thanks all. Until the next time, we have a blast doing this. Hope you enjoy watching it. So, Andy, right. thanks, everybody.